Okay, welcome to tonight's reverse dieting call. Tonight, I'm going to talk all about how to gain muscle and lose fat. So this call really stems from so many people asking me about some pictures that I posted on social media about my own reverse dieting journey. And I really just kind of wanted to put together this call so that I could authentically share with you everything that I learned about reverse dieting and some of the troubleshooting that I went through and just kind of, kind of give you that really clear picture so that if it feels like a fit for you, you can get started and you know you won't have to go through any of the trials and tribulations that I went through. And I just realized I didn't mute the line. So just hang on one second. I'm going to go ahead and mute the line right now. Okay, so to jump back in, um, on this special call tonight, I am going to share with you what reverse dieting actually is and why you might want to do one. Um, I'm also going to share with you the step-by-step process of exactly how to reverse diet yourself. So I'm going to lay out the whole overview for you. I'm also going to share with you answers to the top six most commonly asked questions regarding reverse dieting. And finally, of course, I'm going to tell you about my whole reverse dieting story. You know, I, I received so many messages and questions of people saying, you know, how did you do this like tell me this tell me that and so I've incorporated a lot of those questions into everything that I've compiled for the call tonight so I'm going to share with you why I decided to reverse diet you know how much weight I gained in the beginning and how much I have lost since then um, what I ate how I put together my macros and calories which I'm going to talk more about exactly what the difference is for that what my fitness plan looked like before and after pictures, all of that good stuff I'm going to put together for you. So we have a lot of information to cover, and I'm going to go um, as quickly as I can, but also, you know, as slowly as I can so that it all makes sense because it is a very analytical approach. Um, but at the end, you know, I'm going to share with you some links that you can go and follow up on if you want to learn more and find out more or take it to the next step. Um, I'll give you all of that at the end. So with that, Let's jump in. So if you're on this call, I'm guessing that, you know, you you probably are struggling or at least curious about this whole idea of weight loss and, you know, what happens and why your weight loss has stalled. Or maybe, you know, you've been restricting your calorie intake so much for so long that you feel like you may have, like, killed your metabolism. Or maybe... You struggle with when you eat carbs, your body just kind of like bloats up and makes you feel really puffy. So if any of these things are resonating with you, then reverse dieting might be the solution that you've been searching or Googling for, because I know a lot of us hop on Google and we, we go looking for the answers. And honestly, that's exactly how I found reverse dieting. So what is a reverse diet? A reverse diet is a way of slowly increasing your calories in the form of carbs and fats while keeping protein relatively stable uh, over an extended period of time. And the goal really is to wean yourself off of a diet or some sort of restrictive eating so that you can revitalize your metabolism with minimal fat gain, safely bringing your calorie intake back up to your maintenance level. So the purpose is to restore your metabolism, restore hormonal health, which is connected to your metabolism, to build muscle, to minimize fat gain, and to prime your body for easier fat loss later on down the road. So for someone that's been dieting for a really long time, the idea of eating at maintenance level and being able to actually maintain their weight sounds like a dream come true. And, you know, I've talked to so many people, women especially, that are, like, living and operating in this ongoing state of severe calorie restriction. And then that's often combined with super sweaty cardio workouts, you know, and they just feel like they don't know 
how to stop. It's not working. It's not getting them the results that they want, but they don't know how to get out of it. They kind of feel trapped because they're afraid of eating more food because they don't want to gain weight, but they also feel like they can't eat less because they feel like they're starving all of the time. And this is where reverse dieting can come into play. So I first learned about reverse dieting when I stumbled upon Dr. Lane Norton, who he's a PhD, um, and his brilliant YouTube videos on how to repair metabolic damage. So you can Google that and you can find him. Um, again, at the end, I'll give you some links on how you can find those videos. But that just like blew my mind. And it was so interesting to me. And really what he does is he has a lot of experience working with female figure competitors that have dieted down to literally, you know, 800 to 1,100 calories a day, and they're often doing hours of cardio a week just to maintain, not even lose weight, but just to maintain it. And he helps these women, to, you know, using this reverse diet approach to revive their metabolism and also their spirit and just make them feel happy again. So it's such a terrible place to be in mentally. I've been there. So why does the body stop, stop responding to a calorie deficit? There are a bunch of reasons ranging from hormonal issues to binges, which, you know, are usually paired with really super low calorie days. Um, but for the most part, typically what happens is that when we're restricting calories or when we are playing this game of really eating a lot less or working out a lot more, the body goes into this survival mode. And it, it feels really confused and it, and it goes into this mode of extreme stress. So when the body feels stressed, when the body doesn't feel safe, of course it's going to fight back and do whatever it needs to do to survive and protect itself, right? Like that makes sense. So that's when it starts signaling cravings and hunger and it slows down all processes related to metabolism and digestion. I could talk about that in and of itself for an entire call. Tonight, I'm not going to get into the details of that. That's something I actually cover um, in my other Rock Your Dream Body program. But tonight, I just kind of want to plant that seed that your body is very good at surviving, right? It's, that's its job. So it will do whatever it needs to do in order to survive. So just keep that in the back of your mind. So in addition to this physical stress, that's not the only stress that your body is under. It also has to deal with emotional stressors from life in general related to work and relationships and our finances and all this other stuff that comes up. So imagine the toll that that adds to the mix too. So our bodies can only handle so much stress before they begin breaking down. And so here's something else I want you to think about. So it's so common these days for people to have problems like food sensitivities, which is another thing that I talk about on my blog, and also like uh, underactive thyroid, for example. And I just I want you to take a step back from these things and, and really question whether or not you think there's a correlation between these years of physical and emotional stress that we put ourselves under and how these physical ailments or these breakdowns start popping up. And if you ask me, I think there's totally a correlation. They're very much connected. So my reverse dieting story, um, it really began in April of 2015. So that was last year. And that was when my lifestyle started changing. Um, you can read my full emotional health and weight loss story on my blog if you go to my about page um, to, you know, to really understand how I, how I healed my body and found my balance originally through intuitive eating. And you know, just to kind of give you a little summary, back in my dieting heyday, I would restrict my food and I would increase my cardio as much as possible so I could get as skinny as possible and see how low I could get my measurements to go. I was totally motivated by what I saw on the cover of magazines, and I thought that smaller or thinner equaled beautiful. 
So I'm so, 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 so grateful every single day that I've worked through all of that. And that's actually what I help the majority of my clients with now. Um, and I've really gotten to this place where my mindset around what it means to rock my dream body and my dream life is totally different. It's no longer about the scale for me. It's not about like getting to that number on the scale or to that, you know, into those skinny jeans or that certain size pants. It's about feeling amazing in my skin. And so while I'm going to talk about the scale today as a form of measurement, uh, I want to kind of explain the difference between my relationship with the scale now versus my re relationship with it back then. Back then, it could totally make or break my day. It had so much power over me. Like what that silly little plastic and metal thing, you know, on the bathroom floor would tell me would literally crush me. And now, I don't even see it that way. It's just a tool. It's a tool in my tool belt. And I use multiple different things to be able to gauge progress, and one of them includes a scale, but I also use measurements, I also use pictures, and I also use how I feel. And I do the same thing with my clients too when we're tracking progress and checking in, because it's no longer about getting there so that you can then feel X. You know, I need to get to that number on the scale so I can feel good about myself. I need to get to that number on the scale so I can feel beautiful. It's about, these are all tools that help us to track this progress when we're doing these fun experiments of self-discovery with our own amazing body. So getting back to my story, my reverse dieting story, up until last year in April, intuitive eating was my, my game. Like that's what I did. It changed my life. It was my preferred style of eating and it made so much sense and it worked so well for me. And so I had this routine going, you know, it was a pretty typical thing where I'd go out to eat sometimes, I, you know, would go travel a little bit, but not very often. I, for the most part, I made most of my meals at home and life was pretty basic. But then in 2014, things changed and I went through a divorce. And then I started dating and I started traveling and I started entertaining and things really became anything but routine. And this was a whole new lifestyle of adventure for me. And it was one that I was really, really excited about. But I knew that I was going to have to do something different with how I was eating because what I was doing just wasn't working for me in this new chapter. I was, I was trying to balance these highs of vacation and travel and entertaining with lows of coming home and then eating mostly protein and veggies and fruit. And it just didn't feel like balance to me anymore. And I had also really cut back on my workouts. So I was opting for longer runs and quickie at home body weight circuits to just kind of fit them in. But I was noticing that I wasn't feeling as strong as I wanted to feel. And I also felt like my body felt flatter than I would prefer. And so it was time for me to amp things up, really. Like I was excited. I was excited about these other adventures in my life. And I kind of felt like, wow, what a great opportunity to also amp it up and, you know, create this new adventure with my body and with food and with fitness and take it to that next level too. So, you know, I had all of these references, as I like to say, or all these ways that I've already shown myself in my past of how amazing the human body is and how it's this, like, incredible machine. And when you learn how to support it well and help it to feel safe, it will support you right back. And I was really excited to find out what that looked like in this next level balance for me at this new stage or this new chapter in my life. And so here's what I thought. It, it kind of makes me smile even to say it out loud. Like, I thought to myself, what if I could boost my metabolism so high that even though I primarily eat whole foods and healthy foods and things like that, I, I could, if I wanted to, 
eat whatever I wanted and stay super lean and have an amazing body and an amazing booty that feels alive and full of energy and radiant, radiant and, and just like no matter whether I'm wearing a swimsuit or yoga pants or a tight red dress, like no matter what my life, where, wherever my life takes me, I'm going to feel so confident and amazing and ready for that adventure. And I knew, I felt like, boom, that's it. This is my new goal, and it feels so exciting and so fun. So that's when I discovered reverse dieting. And I started putting my plan into action. Not because I hated my body like I would have in the past, like years and years ago, but rather because it felt thrilling to me to see if I could step up to this new challenge. And so that's where I began. So now I'm going to lay out the overview of the steps that I took to set myself up for this reverse diet. So again, this is the overview. I'm going to jam-pack it full of as much information as I can, but just so that I can get you the follow-up stuff. um, After we're finished, if you want to go over to my website and you click on programs, in, in programs, you can go to the Metabolic Reset course And in that course, I have all of these spreadsheets and videos that explain exactly what I'm talking about right now that make it really, really easy breezy. It's the the exact spreadsheets that I used in the beginning to get started. So um, just wanted to put that out there, number one, so that you don't feel like confused and like, oh my gosh, where do I even start? I I have it all laid out for you there. Um, And a couple other things I wanted to note as well. So I definitely encourage doing the emotional work alongside or even before any science-based metabolic jumpstart or reset that you embark on. Because the emotional work, I will tell you from years of experience myself and with my clients, the emotional work is what heals the mental games and the self-sabotage that we play with ourselves. And that's what allows any progress that you make to stick for the long term. And the second thing I want to share is that if you're listening to this call and, and, you know, you really have severe malnutrition or disordered eating that you're dealing with, I highly suggest that you don't try this on your own. Don't attempt to, you know, attempt to undertake this process of refeeding by yourself. Get the support, the medical supervision, whatever it is that you need so that you can do this in a really healthy way. So with that, let's dive in. So where do you start? Step one is finding your starting point. Because if you don't know where you're at right now, where do you, how do you know where to go, right? So we want to begin slowly increasing your calorie intake from where you are right now. So in order to do that, you have to know, like, what's the average of the calories in the form of macros. So your your macros are your protein, carbs, and fat. And those three things, those three macros, add up to equal calories. So you have protein and carbs both equal one gram of protein or carbs equal four calories. Uh, One gram of fat equals nine calories. And so we'll get into this here in a minute, but you can see how each of those macros add up to equal the total amount of calories that you eat for each day. So what I did was I tracked my calories, my macros and calories for one week, and then I averaged them out. So you can do this using um, programs, online programs like Fit Day is the one that I use. You can use MyFitnessPal. You can use Macros Plus. There's a bunch of them out there. But basically, you just want to find out, like, well, what am I eating right now? If, you, if you've never tracked before and you honestly have no idea, this is, the, this is the starting place. So you have to find your average. So this was my average. It was 1,250 calories a day, 109 grams of protein, 144 grams of carbs, and 33 grams of fat. Now, granted, the weeks where I was vacationing or entertaining and traveling, those were higher, but I have to be honest, I was really surprised at at where these numbers turned out to be. So, but you know what? That was my starting point. I knew where I was at. So that was step one. 
step two is to slowly and consistently increase those macros. So the focus with reverse dieting is on macros, not calories. And the reason is because you want to, it, it really ties in with everything else that I talk about. You're, you're trying, we are nourishing your body. We are not trying to restrict. We are trying to nourish. So we want to make sure we're getting in enough protein for your workouts, enough carbs to fuel your workouts, enough fat to, to fuel your workouts, and then to slowly increase parts of that in a way that are going to give your body more and more support and help it to feel safe. So we're going to focus on talking about macros, not necessarily calories. It's all the same thing. Tracking macros is a form of tracking calories. It's just more specific. So the macros are what I paid attention to the most. And I started my reverse diet at 1,550 calories, 130 grams of protein, 162 grams of carbs, and 43 grams of fat. Now, don't worry about writing any of this down. I'm going to send you a link afterwards in the follow-up email that will have a link to a page where I've laid all of this out. So don't worry about that. You'll be able to see all of this. But the point is, is that I increased. I, I started out, I had my, my average starting point, and I wanted to increase that by 10 to 15% because I didn't want to make it a huge jump. I wanted it to be a considerable, a considerable increase in each of those macros, but not a huge amount. So. Those numbers are an increase in 12%, so between 10 and 15%, in carbs and fat. And the other piece of this to note is, so we are going to slowly increase carbs and fat, but we are keeping protein steady. So the, that's not going to change. You're, from what I learned originally from Dr. Norton, um, basically, his recommendation was to have your protein at one gram of protein per pound of weight uh, for your ideal body weight. So for me, that was between 130 and 135 pounds. And that's what I do with my clients now too. I always have them aim to get their protein uh, one gram per pound of, of weight for their, for their um, ideal body weight. So protein stayed the same carbs and fat started increasing. So here's how I increased them. That was, that was my initial increase was 12%. Then from there, from April of 2015 to January of 2016, that was the extent of my reverse diet. It was nine months long. I basically added 10 grams of carbs and one to two grams of fat each week as long as my body weight didn't fluctuate upward too much. So when I say I added 10 grams of carbs and one to two grams of fat each week, I mean every single day of that week uh, would be at that higher level. So for example, if I raised my carbs, if I, and, and the next thing I'm going to talk about is my weekly progress check-ins, that's how I would see whether or not my body was stabilizing or what was going on. But if I did my weekly progress check-in, everything looked good. I raised my carbs by 10 grams. So say it went from 150 grams of carbs to 160. Then every single day of that next week, I would hit 160 grams of carbs every day. I hope that makes sense. Now, when I say I would hit it, that's my target macros. I, would, I had a little bit of wiggle room. It wasn't like, oh, my God, it has to be exactly 150 on point. I would, I would give myself some wiggle room of five grams in either direction, plus or minus. So it could be 145, it could be 155. I'd try to be as consistent as possible or as close as possible to the target macro, but, but you got five grams of wiggle room in either direction. So that's basically how I did it. There are other people and other ways that you can do it as well. I've also worked with clients where instead of increasing 10 grams and one to two grams, uh, 10 grams of carbs and one to two grams of protein, we would increase by um, 10% for carbs and 2% for your fat grams each week. So, you know, it's just a small increase. Basically, all we're looking for is these slow and steady, simple, step-by-step -step increases that add up to huge change over time. And I'm going to tell you where I ended up at. It's just going to blow your mind. But anyways, so 
Weekly progress check-ins. That's the name of the game. This is how we track the consistency. This is how we see what's going on with the body. And granted, again, this is a very analytical approach, but, but having this window into what's going on with the body is what allows you to know if it is responding well or if it's needing a little bit more time to adjust as you increase. So uh, as I was saying, I would slowly increase by those numbers. Now, if I saw that, if I saw that my body had gained weight during a certain week, and sometimes that would happen, sometimes I would travel, and you know I wasn't able to track quite as quite as well, and you know there would be a lot of variables and things like that, and so you know there were times where I would gain like four pounds in a week. So what I would do on that week is I would hold my macros steady for the following week. I would not increase them. I would give my body time to readjust and sort of calibrate to this new level. And so those weeks I would hold steady. Other weeks I would drop weight. And so that was showing that my body was responding really well. So in those weeks I increased a little bit more aggressively. So maybe by 20 grams of carbs and two to five grams of fat per day. So that being said, you know, I'm talking about the scale right now, but it was more than that because I, again, I was looking at the scale, I was taking my measurements, I was doing pictures, and all of those things, so the pictures were front, side, and back, all of those things gave me these data points to be able to look at this like a 360-degree view because, honestly, you know, the scale fluctuates. It depends on your menstrual cycle and all of these other things. So, I mean, I'm talking about that specifically now, but, but really it was the whole picture. I'd look at, you know, what are the pictures showing? Most of the time you could see, like, with between all three of those things, you could see, okay, the body's responding well or it's not. I need to hold steady. I need to increase. I need to, you know, do whatever to adjust for that. And so it's, again, these are all pieces of this this formula of a slow and steady increase. So that's the food portion. Now let's talk about gaining muscle because that was the other piece of what this was all about for me. So in order to gain muscle, you have to challenge your muscles. And it makes sense, right? The way that the body builds muscle is through the repair process when muscle fibers tear through strength training. So in the, the beginning of this reverse diet adventure for me, I started lifting heavier in the gym, but I wasn't following a very consistent plan. And I knew that I wanted help in creating a training program that was geared towards the results that I specifically was looking for. So I wanted to build my booty. I wanted to tighten up my legs. Not, not necessarily was I going for the powerlifting look, but I just wanted to be like lean tone and, you know, somewhat muscular. And so since I myself am not a trainer, um, I know that we need to pull in experts whenever, you know, we need a little bit of extra support. And so in July, I hired a trainer, and her name is Katie Ann Rutherford, and she's an online training coach, and she helped me to set up a training program, and she also supported me with the reverse diet. So it's always good to have that second opinion, right, of like someone who has already traveled the path someone who's done it, someone who knows what to expect, especially when you're experimenting with new things. It's just great to have that person by your side to help you, like, not freak out or, you know, know what to do next when things are somewhat unclear. So that was huge for me. It was so helpful to have her by my side. Um, again, we worked together online, so it wasn't like she was actually here. But she gave me the training program, and then I was able to do it. I, 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 so I'm not a trainer, but I do know a lot about being in the gym. I'm kind of intuitive when it comes to form, so I didn't necessarily need a coach there in person, but that might be what you need. So just make sure that you're honest with yourself about, like, what kind of support do I need at this stage in my game so that I, so that I feel really comfortable and, again, safe. That's the important thing. And I'm a huge proponent of coaching. Like, even coaches need coaches. Everybody needs a coach whenever you're expanding or, you know, growing in different ways. So we set up a training program that changed every eight weeks. And our program started with two lower body days per week, three upper body days, and three hit days. I'm going to get into that in a second here, too. 
But one thing I do want to mention is that about 16 weeks in, I noticed that my upper body was growing more quickly and my lower body was moving a bit slower. So then we actually flipped the training to three lower body days and two upper body days per week. So now let's talk a little bit about HIT. So HIT is high intensity interval training. So I started with 10 intervals each. So each session, each HIT session had 10 intervals. One interval was two minutes long. And of that two minutes, 20 seconds of it was a sprint, so a really hardcore push. The other one minute and 40 seconds was recover. So that would be walking usually or depending on if I was on a bike or whatever. But basically, you've got your sprint, recover, sprint, recover. And you do that 10 times. That was, that was one of my hit sessions. I would start out with five minutes of a warm-up walking or on the elliptical. And then I would do five minutes of cool down of the same afterwards. Sometimes I would do hit on the bike. Sometimes on the treadmill or outside. Sometimes I would do it flat. Sometimes I would do it uh, on hills. I just kind of change it up depending on how I was feeling. And so our goal was, um, with the training program, was to reduce cardio over time. So for me, that was just, again, another preference. I wanted to see, like, you know, how little cardio can I do and get, stay, get and stay lean? That's something I was just interested in. So that was another piece of the adventure for me. So our starting point for HIT was based on how much cardio I was doing previously but then over time, like by the time I finished up the reverse diet in January, I was down to one hit session each week of eight intervals. So if you think about it, eight intervals, two minutes each at 16 minutes, five minute warm up in the beginning, five minute at the end. I was literally doing 26 minutes of cardio every week. That's awesome. You know, I mean, I like running, like I like doing cardio, but I just think it's so funny how we can thrive and not necessarily need that much cardio. But, you know, to each his own. We all got to do what feels best to us. But that was just kind of a cool thing that, that I came out of it with. So my results, my reverse diet results. So, again, I'm going to send you a link after this call so you can see these in pictures because, obviously, you want to see the pictures usually. But um, here's where I ended up. So. I ended my reverse diet on January 22nd, 2016. I was at 2,600 calories a day, 135 grams of protein, 325 grams of carbs per day, and 86 grams of fat. So from April to January, that was nine months, I gained 11 pounds, which is on average about 1.2 pounds per month. So essentially, I had an increase of over 1,300 calories a day, 26 grams of protein a day, 181 grams of carbs a day, 53 grams of fat a day. If you're not into tracking, this may mean nothing to you, but if you are, that's pretty mind-blowing. And again, so my body was maintaining at that level. Once I got to that point, I was able to maintain. Now, I never did body fat testing. Part of me wishes I did. The other part of me doesn't really care. But I know that, like, some of it was muscle, but certainly not all of it, which is to be expected, right? Like, you're going to put on some fat. And also some of it was more water and more food in my system, too. And honestly, like, some people might get a little freaked out and say, like, 11 pounds, that's kind of a lot of weight to gain. But I didn't see it that way. Like, when I was talking to Katie, my coach, about it, she said, like, on average, one pound per month is, is about normal. So, and again, remember, you're adding muscle. You can always do a, a cut or, you know, what I like to call a leaning out phase afterwards, but you're doing it from a much higher level. And so that's what I'm going to share next is, is what that phase was like for me. So, but before I get into that, I want to tell you one more thing. And that is that I didn't do it perfectly. Like, I didn't follow the plan 100% all the time. I went on vacation. I went to Las Vegas. I went to San Diego. I went to Australia and Fiji for two and a half weeks. And I will tell you, it's tough to measure and track everything when you're on the road, when you're eating out the majority of your meals at a restaurant. You know, at home, 
I could use a food scale and I could measure things, you know, consistently. And but when you're traveling, I, I'm just not that person. I'm not going to bring a food scale with me to a restaurant. Some people might, but for me, it just wasn't a priority, you know. And there are other times where I didn't I didn't plan well enough. I either would go way over in my macros or I just wouldn't hit the target macros. Like I would end up at the end of the day and I'll be like, shoot, I didn't hit my protein for the day or I didn't hit my carbs for the day. I ate more protein and less carbs or vice versa. So I certainly was not perfect, but I did the best that I could. And I kept my focus on consistency and the long-term goal instead of perfection. My goal in all of this, like this whole experiment, was to create more freedom and flexibility. So to me, all of this was forward progress. So what did I eat? Like that's the question I get asked all the time. What did you eat? So I'll tell you, it, it's tough to eat that much food by just eating low-cal, like veggies, salads, fruits, and lean meats. You know, it was easy to hit it to hit those target macros when I would go out to eat because, or at least I guess I should say it was easy to eat that volume of food when I would go out because I would usually have some bread or a couple cocktails or chips and guacamole or something like that. At home, I ate a lot of Ezekiel English muffins or tortillas and peanut butter and Greek yogurt and avocados. And I experimented with a lot of you know, quote unquote, fun foods, like healthy desserts and ice creams. And I would put honey on things. I never used to use honey because it was just like extra calories, you know, way back in my dieting heyday. But I used honey and I, and I tried like cream cheese. I did, I tried different recipes. I did a lot of different things that were just, you know, really fun to experiment with. And throughout this whole process, I also had one to two of my favorite meal replacement shakes or bars each day so that I was sure that I was absolutely getting in my nutrients and really fueling my workouts properly. So I usually structured it to have a shake or a bar before or after my workouts. And if you want to learn more about that, um, I'll share more at the end of the call on how we can chat about that too. So of course I had my fruits and my veggies and everything else that was healthy foods, but honestly, I had to keep my fiber around 55 grams or less because otherwise I noticed that I had some digestive upset. So, you know, it's totally possible to have too much fiber for sure. And keep that in mind. Like when you're eating tons of salads and you're like, what's going on? Yeah, like too much fiber is something that can definitely happen. Okay, had to take a sip of water. So, so how did I increase my macros by over 1,300 calories, which is literally more than what some people eat every single day without gaining that much fat, really? I will tell you, again, consistency. The more consistent you can be, the better off, the less fat you're going to gain. You know, had I been more on point, I probably would have gained even less fat. But I'm just not into being super meticulous at this stage in my life. You know, using a food scale was meticulous enough. And also the second part of it. So the first part is consistency. The second part is, again, the more muscle you have, the more calorically expensive your body becomes to run. So what that means is that your body will naturally burn more fuel and more calories even at rest when you have more muscle. So that's the whole point. You know, muscle means that you can eat more and get away with it. Bottom line. Okay, so step three. Step three is the leaning out phase. So you do the reverse diet. Sometimes people won't uh, do a leaning out phase. Totally up to you. Just depends on your preferences. So for me, I knew, like, I didn't have a lot of leaning out to do, but I just kind of wanted to see if I could get serious abs and, you know, lean out my legs and my arms a little bit. So that's the phase that I'm in right now. And once I complete this phase, which will most likely be this summer, the final phase for me would be then to boost my macros back up again to that 2,600 calorie range and then maintain. Just simply maintain from there. I'll still work out. I'll keep doing my thing, but that's at least it's, that's my goal so far. Who knows? By the time I get there, maybe I'll set another goal because it's always fun to have a goal. But for right now, that's my next goal. 
And my current macros are 2,000 calories, 135 grams of protein, because remember, we want to keep that steady so we can keep as much lean muscle mass as possible, um, 225 grams of carbs, and 66 grams of fat. So those are my, those are my average macros each week. Now, I also add in one cellular cleanse day per week. And since that is a semi-fasted day, I also balance that out with two higher volume or higher calorie days of around 2,300 calories um, per day. So I have two of those higher calorie days just to keep my metabolism firing. And again, if you want to learn more about cellular cleansing, I'm going to give you more info on how we can chat about that at the end of the call if it's something you're interested in. So results so far. All right, I am two months in. To this leaning out phase and I'm currently down six pounds so remember I gained 11 I'm down six so I'm really only about five pounds more right now than when I started and and this is the coolest part of all my measurements are pretty much the same measurements as what they were in April of 2015 when I started so do you know why that's really cool? I'm going to tell you. The reason why that's really cool is because I'm taking up about the same amount of space, but I weigh more. Now, why is that a good thing? Muscle weighs more than fat. So what that means is I have more muscle now and less fat, which means that my body composition has changed. And like, I don't even need to see the scale or the measurements to tell you that. I can look at my back and can see... My, I'm, I'm stronger. I can squat more. My legs feel awesome. They're more de defined. Like I feel fierce and sexy and all of those things combined. Like that's for me what lifting weights does. Like, you know, it really has, it just makes, it makes me feel feminine, but also it just makes me feel confident too. And that's why I do it. So that's a whole story, another phone call for another day. Anyway, so training wise, it's pretty much the same. Like I'm still doing three lower body days per week, two upper body days, and now I'm doing two hit days with 10 intervals each day. I will sometimes take a day off completely whenever I need to. I don't have that scheduled in. I just kind of do it when I feel like I need a day off. Or there are other times where I just don't push it that hard in a workout. If I feel tired, if I feel like I just, you know, need to go a little bit, um, easier, you know, lean back a little bit. I just won't push it. I'll, you know, I'll go to the gym, I'll do something, but I won't, I won't go overboard. Now, it's recommended to reduce your carbs and your fat macros by 20% on a complete rest day when you're doing um, these analytical, you know, like a reverse diet or a leaning out phase. But uh, I have to be honest, I did this during the reverse diet, but I haven't been so on point with it during the leaning out phase. And the reason why is just because I'm not in that big of a rush. Like, I, I feel my body tightening up. I love the way it looks. I, I feel lean. I feel good. I'm just kind of going with the flow and enjoying life. And I'm not really stressing about it because I see the results. So there's no reason in my mind to push harder if, you know, things are working as is. And plus, I like to eat. So I don't really want to eat less. <laughs> and if, you know what I mean? If I, if I even get in the results where I'm at, I'm cool with that. So that covers the majority of my own personal reverse diet. Now I want to get into the top six reverse diet questions that I have been asked just to cover, you know, all of the bases and make sure I get all of your questions answered um, of everybody that wrote in, and then at the end, I'm going to open it up to Q&A. So if there's anything on your mind that you want to ask that's beyond anything that I've covered tonight, go ahead and ask at the end. So I'm going to go through these top six reverse dieting questions now. So number one, how long should I reverse diet? Well, the answer is that this isn't a quick fix approach. So it's going to take time, and it's going to take patience, and a willingness to let go of weight loss goals for a period of time. And really the reason why is because we want to focus on healing any metabolic damage. So 
you know, some people stabilize in a few weeks. Other people, it takes months. For me, I did it for nine months. Um, it's just really so dependent on your history, your starting point, and your own health. And the more extreme that your diet history was, and the more unstable your health, the longer it may take for you to get to that place of equilibrium. Um, and the more likely that you might need to work with a coach or a team. So just, just keep that in mind. Like, this is not a race. Like, everything that I talk about, you know, we, this is never about forcing anything. It's about nourishing your body towards your goals. And, it, and really, it requires a change of mindset. Um, and a willingness to to do what it takes to get yourself to the long-term goal versus what you think you're trying to create with any short-term goal. So I hope that makes sense. But anyways, number two, um, but I hate tracking macros and calories. Is this for me? And I, I have to be honest, like if you hate counting calories and macros, it makes your skin crawl. Um, or using a food scale to you is just crazy insane, then this approach is probably not for you. You know, it's definitely not for everyone. It's definitely not for every one of my clients. Like, I have such a wide range of clients. I was actually talking about this with one of them today. I have this tool belt of all of these different tools that I can use. And what we do is we plug in those tools based on wherever you're at on your own unique journey, on what you need, what kind of support you need, what your goals are. And so for some people, reverse dieting is really helpful, but for other people, it would make them crazy insane. So you really have to check in with yourself on that. You know, it's very analytical, and you must be committed to tracking your calories and your macros daily and consistently in order to raise them in that optimal manner. You also must be willing to plan ahead so that you're not scrambling last minute to hit your macros um, at the end of the day. Like I was talking about, if you don't plan ahead, then you don't understand that, oh, shoot, I should have ate more protein at lunch, or I should have had more carbs at breakfast so that I could have hit those, those targets. And you're not trying to squeeze everything in or you didn't go way overboard by the end of the day. And here's the other reframe, and this is something I kind of mentioned already, is that when you're thinking about tracking macros, in this sort of a setting, in this container of a reverse diet, think about it from the mindset of nourishment and fuel versus a mindset of restriction. So this is about repair and healing. It's not about getting to a number on the scale. You know, it's not about restriction. It's, it's no fun when you come at this mindset of tracking from a mindset of restriction you know, and looking at how little you get to eat. It's so much more fun when every week you get to see how much more you get to eat and how much more you're fueling your body and how much more energy you have in the gym. It's a totally different perspective. It seems scary at first, but once you dive into it, it's a game changer, really. So number three, is reverse dieting extreme? I don't believe it's extreme at all. I think, it, in fact, it's quite the opposite. It can be the first step in the healing process for someone that has been trapped by years of calorie counting and extreme restrictions. Um, extremes are not sustainable. That's something I talk about all the time. And if you've been stuck in a mindset of extremes for a while, the reality is, is that you're going to have to stop doing that thing and do something different at some point, right? So you might as well start now. And this can be that first step. Like this can be that first step for some people who are afraid to get away from structure, who are so far down the structure path of like rules and rigid control that this is that first step towards freedom. So really the goal is to get you out of this deprivation mindset and to stabilize your eating habits and to get you to that place where you're you know, eventually eating at maintenance or even slightly above and probably a lot more carbs. Like most people are just severely limiting the amount of carbs that they're eating. And I want to get you there and help you get there without gaining weight and bloating up. And actually, that's another mindset shift too. When it comes to carbs, a lot of people think that they can't eat them because their body responds negatively. Like they, they're like, oh, I'm sensitive to carbs because my body bloats up. But actually what's happening is if you're restricting carbs a lot for a long time, 
and then you start eating them or you have like a binge where you have a night out where you eat a lot of carbs and the next day you feel super bloated, that's because your body's just not used to them. So for most people, if you start reintroducing them on a regular basis, then your body knows how to metabolize, like how to, you know, metabolize them and, and, and they're used to, it's used to having them uh, carbs in your system. So that's an, a whole nother um, kind of mind blowing thing for most people. Like, oh, it's, it's actually just that my body doesn't know, isn't used to it. So anyway, moving on. Number four, do I need to reverse diet? Well, only you know the answer. You know, if you're eating very little and you're maintaining or even gaining weight, then this may be a time to focus on metabolic repair instead of weight or fat loss for a little while. If you're scared to reverse diet because there's a possibility that you might gain weight, then I just kind of, I want you to reframe that in your head. And, and I know it's scary. And I know that, of course, if you're like, oh my gosh, I've gained weight, I don't want to gain more weight. I want to ask you to ask yourself, what will it cost you if you continue doing what you've been doing? And a lot of times people don't realize how high those stakes really are. So some more questions that you can ask yourself to find out, like, should I reverse diet? One question would be, is what I'm doing currently healthy? You might want to ask yourself, am I seeing progress? If the answer is no, then you might want to reverse diet. Um, is what I'm doing right now causing me to miss out on certain things that I want to experience in life? That's a big one, right? Like when we get stuck in that dieting mindset, we just hold ourselves apart from so many fun things because we're afraid of the temptation. Another great question is, what could my life be like if I made some changes? And then finally, what is my body telling me? What signals am I ignoring? So, when it comes to that, like one of the biggest ways that we sabotage our long-term success when we're talking about getting our dream body is that we don't listen to our body. Under eating and then binging is really what's at the root of most body image issues that women especially are facing these days. And it's not their fault. You know, I, this is another topic that I talk about a lot is that we get a lot of messages from the media um, about what we should and what we shouldn't be eating. And there's so much shame attached to doing it right that we just end up being super confused and, you know, physically and emotionally exhausted, and it just doesn't work. So we, we really have to consciously make that decision to switch gears and take our power back. And it's not about measuring up. It's about feeling good in our skin. So, yeah, it's true. There's, there could be a chance that your metabolism has slowed down because your body is really smart and it can learn how to function really efficiently on lower and lower calorie intake. But that doesn't mean that your metabolism is messed up beyond repair. And for the vast majority of women, a slow metabolism is fixable, but not through more restriction and not through more cardio. And that's the mindset shift. That's the game changer. So wrapping this up, number five, will lifting weights make me bulky? That's a big one, right? Like we hear that all the time. So sometimes women avoid doing strength training because they believe that lifting heavy weights will make them look bulky and less feminine. And the truth is that it could because we all have this different definition of what bulky means, right? We all have a different um, goal when it comes to what we want our physique to look like. So bulky for you might not be the same for me. But here's the thing, like getting back to this idea of a muscular system, a muscular body is an expensive system to run. So we want to have muscle, you know, obviously we want to be strong, we want to be able to lift things. And it also helps to build bone mass and um, even even out imbalances in our structure. And plus, it feels so empowering, at least for me, like I mentioned, like, I feel totally feminine when I'm deadlifting, and I'm building a really perky booty. That's my thing. But, um, you know, when it comes to weightlifting, you know, it's not like all or nothing. It doesn't have to be like powerlifting, bodybuilding body, or nothing, or flat body, skinny. Like, there are so many different uh, physiques in between that. So you can find the training regimen that fits your own unique goals. And if you don't know how to train for those goals or that physique, 
then you just want to get some help. Find a coach that already has achieved what you want and hire them to guide you and support you in creating those similar results for yourself. And I actually think that's where a lot of this misinformation about getting bulky really comes from, is just people not understanding that you have to train for the body that you want. Like, you have to train for those specific goals. And once you understand how to do that, then you can get there, you know, and, and that's really it has a lot to do with finding a, a really great trainer, someone who knows what they're doing. So last question, number six, but isn't reverse dieting not listening to your body? Should I, shouldn't I be focusing on intuitive eating instead? And that's such a great question and something that I really want to make sure that I explain, especially to my clients on, you know, my newsletter and people that are used to me talking about intuitive eating and they might be confused and think, well, what is this? Why are we talking about dieting? And I just want to help you to understand, again, something I touched on already is that sometimes we get so disconnected from our body that we need a reset. And sometimes that reset requires more structure or as I like to say, thicker guardrails to start. So I talk about this scale of structure to freedom. So we have structure on one end and we have freedom on the other. And every single person is at a different spot on that scale. Sometimes we need more structure. Sometimes we need more freedom. Sometimes we need some structure that helps us feel safe in order to experiment with more freedom. And that's where that's where we can get really creative and, and very clear about what it is that's going to help you with your own unique goals. So this is where sometimes a more scientific approach can be helpful. Um, being intuitive and listening to your body is absolutely still an important part of the equation for sure. But in this particular case with resetting your metabolism, sometimes having this more analytical approach and tracking um, can help to maximize your results and minimize the fat gain, which is the goal, right? So it's not to say that you can't do it with intuitive eating. You, of course, could. It's just a little bit different structure. It's a little bit different container. And again, you know, it's like each person is different in what they need. And this is just one option, one tool in the tool belt. So with that, I am going to wrap up. I think I, I really hope I covered everything. I tried to put everything that I could into this and packed, I jam-packed it. We're right coming up on the end of the hour. Um, and I really, I just wanted to give you everything that I've got so that you understand how to do this. Um, I, I, you know, I, I hope the best for everyone. I know that there are a lot of women who are struggling with this feeling of dieting down and dieting down. Um, and it's tough because I've been there. I definitely have in the past. So if you loved everything that you heard on this call and you really do want to take it further, I have a couple different options for you. So number one, um, if you want sort of a self-study way of taking this, you're like, I've got it. I just want some spreadsheets. I want some videos that will take me through. I'm offering a special just for everybody who's on the call tonight. And this special is good for the next 24 hours. And that is on my metabolic reset course. So if you go to rockyourdreambody.com forward slash metabolic dash reset, you can get that course at a special empowered decision savings. So instead of $97, it's $67 for the next 24 hours. And that, I think, is everything that you need to get yourself jump started get yourself going on a reverse diet and seeing results. I've spelled out everything that I've shared on this call and like 10 times more and made it really super easy. Um, so it's pretty much plug and play. Like done all the research for you, gave you all of the things that you need. Um, all you have to do is just follow the steps and go through. So again, you can go to rockyourdreambody.com forward slash metabolic reset. Actually, it's metabolic dash reset. Or if you just want to go to my website, you can go to programs and you can find it there. So that's one option. If you're like, I just want to plug and play, I'm just going to do this on my own. Number two, if you feel like you need more customized support and you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, then let's set up a call and let's talk about your unique goals, your you know, current challenges, um, the different things that you're kind of facing right now, and then we can talk about what it would look like for us to work together. So that is at SheilaVeers.com forward slash coaching. 
So I'm going to give you these links in the, the follow-up email when I send that out. But um, that's the best way to set up a call. It's basically an application, and I'm asking you some questions that are actually really amazing questions for you to answer for yourself anyway. And that will help you to get clear on like what kind of support you need and what you're looking for. And that helps me to understand if I have the tools and you know if my specialty is what you're looking for so we can see if we're a match. And if we are, then I'll get in touch with you and we'll set up that call. So um, basically that call is a 20 minute dream body breakthrough session. And that's where we go through all of those things in detail and give you some tips to get started. And we talk about you know how we can work together. So with that, I am going to open up the lines. Um, actually, you're going to open up your own line if you have any questions. Just hit star six to unmute yourself, and then uh, we can have a conversation, and I can answer any questions that you have. 